What I saw when I returned home after working overtime was my husband holding down our daughter and forcing her to drink something, while his mother watched silently. I saw my daughter lying unconscious and limp beside them, and I lost control of myself, jumped on them. My name is Liliana. I'm a 30-year-old housewife who works as a teacher at a high school. I married Adrian, who was two years older than me and whom I met through a circle activity during my university days. We celebrated our fifth wedding anniversary and three years ago, we had our daughter, Lily. My parents' house is near our home. With my mother's help right after childbirth and my husband's concern for me, I was able to face my daughter with ease during my childcare leave. Then, two years ago, when we found a nursery school that could take care of our daughter, my mother-in-law, who was living with my brother-in-law and his wife in another state, offered to live with us. I knew that my mother-in-law wasn't getting along well with her strong-willed daughter-in-law, so I gladly accepted the offer. Until then, my relationship with my mother-in-law had not been bad, and I thought it would be reassuring to have her help as a senior in child-rearing. My mother-in-law is a sociable person, and she quickly became friends with the neighbors. The day after she moved in, I saw her having fun, and I thought it was good to accept her living with us. About a month after we started living together, my mother-in-law suggested that we withdraw our daughter from the nursery school because she would take care of her at home. My husband agreed with his mother's opinion. Although I had entrusted most of the nursery school pickups and drop-offs to my mother-in-law, I was honestly uncomfortable when I heard that it was too much trouble. We finally found a nursery school. Why don't we keep her there? I said. My husband replied. What are you talking about? It costs money to send her to a nursery school, and it's a waste to not have my mother take care of her at home. My mother-in-law added. That's right. Raising children costs money. You have to save money by cutting unnecessary expenses. My husband continued. Yeah, that's right. My mother raised us brothers splendidly. Isn't it more reassuring than leaving it to young nursery school teachers? Our daughter was forced to withdraw from the nursery school by the two of them, and I was pushed aside. After that, my mother-in-law started taking my daughter out frequently to her hobby circle and other places. Around this time, my daughter started crying at night and getting sick more often. I wasn't too worried about it because the same thing could happen even if she went to nursery school, but the problem was my mother-in-law. She refused to approach my daughter when she was feeling unwell because she didn't want to catch the illness, and in the end, I had to take time off work or leave my daughter with a local childcare supporter. Sometimes I wondered if there was any point in choosing home childcare. Fortunately, with the understanding and support of my colleagues at work, I was able to get help even if I had to take sudden time off, and I was able to overcome it with my mother's help. But I couldn't just rely on my colleagues, and my mother was also working, so I felt bad about relying on them too much. When my daughter was feeling unwell and crying, I was exhausted both physically and mentally, and I began to think that I had no choice but to give up my job. Then my husband's debt came to light. He had failed in an investment he had started to earn pocket money. I couldn't quit my job, so if I couldn't rely on my mother-in-law anymore, I had no choice but to look for a nursery school where my daughter could go back to. However, my mother-in-law was living with us, and it became difficult to pass the nursery school entrance examination. When I was at a loss, my mother-in-law told me that her son's debt was because of her and asked me to leave my daughter to her. As she said, my mother-in-law became actively involved in raising my daughter, and when she got sick again, she took care of her, so I was able to continue working. When my daughter took the medicine prescribed by the hospital, she slept better and cried less than before. Sometimes I talked with my husband that our daughter had gotten a lot better. However, my daughter's night crying became even worse. My mother-in-law scolded her, saying, I've never heard of a child crying so much at night. And my husband continued to take out his frustration on me. Even after I returned to work, I tried to go home as early as possible and take care of my daughter. But this year, I became a homeroom teacher for high school students, which made it difficult. My husband also became busy due to a department transfer, and the burden on my mother-in-law increased. 
my family was still sleep deprived because my daughter's night crying didn't improve at all. My mother-in-law, who had been using sleeping pills regularly, decided to get a stronger prescription, which made me feel sorry for her. But when my husband and mother-in-law started taking sleeping pills together, their sleep deprivation seemed to be relieved. I couldn't take medicine to sleep, so I continued to have difficult days, but I decided that there was no other way to spend time with my daughter. My husband and his mother were able to sleep better when they were frustrated with my daughter's night crying, and my daughter became more calm when she was with me. For now, I was relieved. Around autumn, there were a series of school events and I had to follow up with students who were worried about their future studies. I couldn't take time off, and my daughter's night crying worsened again. I had to apologize to my husband and mother-in-law and beg them to stop taking sleeping pills. They reluctantly accepted my request, but my daughter started to become drowsy and lethargic during the day. I noticed this change in my daughter's behavior and decided to talk to my husband about it. You know, Lily seems a little strange, my husband replied. Really? I don't really care. She's not paying attention when I call her name, and it's worrying me. Maybe we should have her checked at the hospital. What? That's an exaggeration. Maybe she's sleeping more during the day because her night crying has subsided. I still think I should take her to the hospital tomorrow. Okay. I'm off tomorrow, so I'll take Lily to the hospital with my mother. You have to prepare for your final exams, right? You don't need to take the day off. Is that okay? Thank you. Although I was a little worried about my daughter's behavior, I decided to go to work the next day since he would be accompanying her. That day, I had to deal with my students' parents and came home late. I sent my husband a message during the day, but I only received a reply that said everything was fine, and I was worried about my daughter. When I got out of the car, I heard my daughter crying. Was she crying because she couldn't sleep tonight? I hurried home. When I entered the house, the bedroom door was open, and I could hear my daughter crying and my husband shouting. You don't have to shout even if you're frustrated, I thought as I entered the bedroom. What I saw was my husband holding down my daughter and forcing her to drink something. My mother-in-law was just looking at my daughter next to him, looking annoyed. I saw my daughter flailing her arms and legs violently under my husband's body and let out a silent scream. The next moment, I punched my husband in the face and slapped my mother-in-law's cheek. What are you doing? After both of them held their cheeks for a moment, they started to criticize me for holding my daughter. What are you doing? What kind of person are you? You hit us out of nowhere! Shut up! You're a father who holds down a three-year-old child, and you're a grandmother who just watches it happen. You both deserve it. My husband and mother-in-law were silenced by my unusual behavior. My daughter, who I thought had stopped crying, took shallow breaths and went limp in my arms. What did you give Lily to drink? Medicine. What kind of medicine? It's just medicine. Right, mom? Yes. It's what we got from the hospital. I held my daughter and looked for the medication instructions. There was no medicine prescribed today. There shouldn't be any over-the-counter medicine that my daughter can drink, let alone any leftover medicine from before. While I was doing that, my daughter lost consciousness and started foaming at the mouth. I called an ambulance on my smartphone while giving first aid to my daughter, but she never regained consciousness. It felt like a very long time from when I held my daughter to when we arrived at the hospital by ambulance. When I saw my daughter being taken to the treatment room at the hospital, it seemed that my husband and mother-in-law had arrived late. They approached me looking annoyed, but didn't seem to be in a hurry. They were holding their cheeks, which were purple and swollen, with a handkerchief. Maybe it was just my feelings, but it seemed like they were annoyed that my daughter had become like this. I confirmed that my husband was standing next to me and asked again what he had given my daughter to drink. Sleeping pills? 
he said, glaring at me as if it were nothing. Sleeping pills. Is it normal to prescribe sleeping pills to children? I was surprised and exclaimed because I had heard that using sleeping pills on young children is done under the supervision of doctors or nurses. No. It's medicine prescribed to mom. My husband replied. What? Did you give her adult medicine? It was a hassle to crush it and dissolve it in water to make it easier to drink. He said. But it helped her sleep well. It seemed like you were busy with work, so I thought I'd help you out. Is this the first time you've given her sleeping pills? When she was sick with a cold before, she slept well after taking medicine from the hospital. I remembered that and started giving her sleeping pills to help her sleep. What are you guys thinking, giving such things to a child? It can't be helped. I'll get sick if I don't sleep at night. My husband said. I have a constitution that requires me to take sleeping pills, but I couldn't do that because of that child. My mother-in-law said. Are these people really the same human beings in front of me? Giving adult medicine, let alone crushing tablets, to put a young child to sleep is far beyond my common sense, and I couldn't even speak. The reason why Lily's night crying doesn't stop is because you don't discipline her, right? That's right. You're always spoiling her, so she's so selfish. Even though you can't thank me and my mother enough, you do something like this. Jeez, I can't stand it anymore. The husband strokes his cheek again. That's my line. Ha. Huh? When the husband tried to grab me, a young man in a white coat appeared from behind and glanced at us with a stern face. This is a hospital. Please refrain from speaking loudly. Sorry. This rubbish is. Not rubbish, she is. But, if she had just kept quiet without arguing, my son wouldn't have raised his voice so much, would he? The male doctor sighed heavily at the words of the husband and mother-in-law and continued with a stern expression. No, it was a story that made me want to argue even though I'm a doctor. Is it true that you gave your child sleeping pills? What's wrong with that? What's wrong? It's not nothing. I can't just stay silent when I hear that you gave adult medicine to a young child. The husband and mother-in-law were a little taken aback by the doctor's angry tone, but they soon had a look of dissatisfaction on their faces. We were suffering from the child's night crying. You can't understand how we feel since you're not the one involved. Certainly, there are many people who are struggling with a child who cries at night. However, giving your daughter sleeping pills is not a reason to put her in danger. What are you talking about? It's medicine prescribed by the hospital, isn't it? It's safe. No. Sleeping pills prescribed for adults are dangerous for children. You don't have that kind of knowledge, do you? Well, the doctor who prescribed it and the pharmacist didn't say anything about it. It is a well-known fact that you should not transfer medicines prescribed to others. We prescribe medication after assessing the patient's condition. If you give a person the wrong medication, it can be life-threatening. I wouldn't know that unless you explained it to me. That's right. If you're going to be so noisy, you should explain it. Then it's the hospital's fault if something happens to my daughter. Stop it already. Don't just make excuses all the time, both of you. A low voice escaped my mouth at the attitude of them who did not show a repentant attitude. Lily's situation is undoubtedly your responsibility. We didn't know, did we? It's not that you didn't know. You just didn't try to find out. If you think about it a little, you can understand that you shouldn't do such a thing without being explained. I can't imagine a daughter-in-law talking back to her husband in my day. Huh? If the wife can't correct the mistake of the husband who put my child in danger, I'll quit as a wife. Well, today's daughter-in-law is just like this. Certainly, I have worked, 
So it is true that I have caused trouble for my mother-in-law. That's right. You know how much we've suffered from night crying. But wasn't it my daughter who was suffering? Without thinking about the cause of night crying, you took her around and didn't even look at her when she got sick. But old people like me can't afford to catch a cold. I see. So you forgot that children are not just cute. I'm fed up. Hey! You too. My husband and daughter's father who don't even try to think about anything other than themselves are not necessary for us. What you did to your daughter was assault. Be prepared to take appropriate action by filing a complaint. Then, the doctor contacted the police and the child welfare center, and the husband and mother-in-law were arrested and detained. My daughter had been using a large amount of sleeping pills, but fortunately she was able to survive. I divorced my husband and received my home as compensation, but sold it and moved. The former husband was charged with assault against his daughter. Since I did not agree to a settlement, he was sentenced to prison as it was. Now, my daughter has completely stopped crying at night and has no after-effects of sleeping pills, and is living with the help of my parents. I am just happy to see my daughter's healthy appearance. How was this story? Please subscribe to the channel as well. Let's meet again in the next video. My name is Helen. I'm a 33-year-old housewife. I married my husband Michael, who is the same age as me, six years ago. The following year, our eldest daughter was born, and we now live happily with our family of four. My husband's parents and his brother's family live about 10 minutes away by car from our apartment. Our relationship with our in-laws is good. If my husband were the eldest son and had married first, I think I would have been happy to live with my parents-in-law. That's how close we are. In particular, I'm close to my mother-in-law. I visit her with tea and sweets, drink tea together, go shopping together, and help her with her hobby of gardening. Sometimes she brings cooked dishes to our house, which is very much appreciated. My in-laws loved their grandchildren very much and sometimes came to our house as a couple and said, why don't you take a break from watching the kids since we're watching them? My mother passed away when I was in junior high school, so I looked up to my mother-in-law as if she were my real mother, and she loved me like a real daughter. My brother-in-law's family has no children, so my sister-in-law continues to work as she did before she got married. My brother-in-law is seven years older than my husband and a little older than me, but my sister-in-law is the same age as me. She is a fair-skinned, slender, quiet beauty, and my husband says she's the opposite of me. She's like a ghost in an old western painting. He says something strange like that. It's true that I have dark skin, muscular build, and a slightly darker face, and I've been told since I was a child that I'm strong-willed, so it can't be helped if he says that, but it's a little annoying. I thought we could get along because we were the same age as my sister-in-law, but I'm actually not very good at it. We don't have any common topics or hobbies, and even if we talk to each other, the conversation doesn't go well. Even so, when we visit our in-law's house, we buy tea sweets for my sister-in-law too, and when we occasionally meet each other, we greet each other with a smile. I thought that someday we would become friends easily. I once said to my mother-in-law that it might not be good to bring children here too often because my brother-in-law's wife might find it difficult. According to my mother-in-law, it was discovered that my brother-in-law was the cause of infertility due to infertility treatment and they couldn't have children. I feel sorry for Sarah. She said. But there are many couples without children and as long as those kids are happy together. That's what my mother-in-law said. Today too, while drinking tea with my mother-in-law at her house. I'm not having much luck lately. I encountered aggressive driving for the first time yesterday. I said. I cried out like that and my mother-in-law was very worried. She strongly recommended that I wear a drive recorder. But really, I'm not having much luck lately. The onions I bought the other day were rotten inside, and the other day there were a lot of cigarette butts thrown in front of the apartment door. When I said that, my mother-in-law said, Helen, aren't you in your unlucky year? Let's go to a purification ceremony next time for a change of pace. But then, I think it was a little after 9 p.m. when my sister-in-law called. 
When my husband answered the phone and turned pale, I knew something was wrong, but what he said was something I couldn't believe. Mom passed away. My head went blank and it felt like I was having a bad dream. My mother-in-law was still in her late 60s. Although her blood pressure was a little high, she hadn't caught a cold in recent years and was always healthy. The cause of death was subarachnoid hemorrhage, and it was really sudden. Why? Why so suddenly, I hate it. I can't believe this. It's impossible that my mother-in-law is no longer in this world. We were planning to go to a purification ceremony together. We wanted to go cherry blossom viewing in the spring and go on a family trip. Those thoughts kept going round and round in my head, and I couldn't stop crying. The wake was held at my parents-in-law's house. My father-in-law and brother-in-law's family were also haggard. Of course, my husband and I were too. My mother's face at the time of her death was peaceful, and it seemed like she would answer if I spoke to her, so I called out to her many times. The children were being looked after by a close mom friend who lived in the same apartment building, but they couldn't rely on her for too long. At times like this, if my mother-in-law were here, she would have looked after them. I thought of such foolish things and cried again. I left my husband at the wake and went back home with my two children. My husband is planning to go directly to the funeral hall tomorrow. I have to take both children to say their final goodbyes to their grandmother. The next morning, when I was busy getting ready, the phone rang. When I answered it, it was my sister-in-law on the other end with an intense tone. Don't come to the funeral hall. Go home. Huh? I didn't understand what she was saying. It was the first time she had ever called me new, and even though she told me to go home, I hadn't even left yet. Um, sister-in-law? Did something happen? When I asked her that, she shouted at me over the phone. If you come, mom won't be able to rest in peace. And then she hung up. I didn't understand what was going on, so I called my husband. Hey, what happened? My sister-in-law just called me and told me not to come to the funeral hall. When I asked him that, he said something even I couldn't believe. Well, something's not right, anyway, I think you shouldn't come. Even so, I can't possibly agree with that. I went to the funeral home with my children. I parked the car, took my children's hands, and walked towards the venue when my husband found us first. Did you come? My husband said with a troubled expression. Well, of course I did. What's going on? At that moment, my sister-in-law noticed me and walked towards us with a determined look. I told you not to come. You're really shameless, she shouted at me in a tone I couldn't imagine coming from her usual self. What happened? Even if you suddenly say something like that. Then my sister-in-law opened the notebook she was holding and showed it to me vigorously. Look here. And here, and here too. When I saw the page my sister-in-law opened, I knew my blood was draining from my face. The memo written in the notebook, Helen. Am I hated? It's not just my imagination. Foreign matter mixed in. Hair and vinyl pieces. Helen. Harassment? I check it out indirectly, but it's dodged. Smiling, but not smiling. A little scary. Did I do something to offend you? Helen. It's painful to be alone with you. It was more like a memo than a diary, but it contained things that seemed like bad things about me. Is this true? My mother-in-law wrote this? I said in disbelief. There's no way this could be happening. My father-in-law and brother-in-law rushed over to us, probably because they heard the commotion. Father-in-law, this isn't true, is it? My mother-in-law did something like this. I asked him in shock. My father-in-law looked puzzled as he replied. Well, I thought it was some kind of mistake too, but this is definitely something my wife wrote. The notebook became a topic of conversation at last night's wake, and some relatives are angry with you. We have children too, so why don't you go home for now? My husband told me that, and all my strength left me as if my knees were about to give way. No matter how much I tried to explain myself, there was no way anyone would listen. I was already full of shock and sadness from my mother-in-law's death, 
and I was devastated by the contents of the diary she left behind. Finally, I took my children's hands and returned to the car with great difficulty. My husband ran after us out of breath and said. Are you okay? Calm down and drive safely. I knew that without being told. Although I was flustered, I couldn't put my children in danger. After taking a few deep breaths, I started the engine and drove home. I can't believe I couldn't attend my beloved mother-in-law's funeral. Did she really hate me? Was it really a nuisance for me to come to their house? No, there's no way that could be true. And foreign matter mixed in? That's something I don't remember doing. When I confided in my husband after returning home. Maybe your mother has started to lose her mind a little, he said unexpectedly. No way. That wasn't the case at all. My mother-in-law never forgot anything and was even more reliable than me. But we're not together all the time and there are still sporadic cases of dementia, he said. If my husband says so, I can't argue with him. And if I don't think that way, it's also true that I can't explain what was written in that notebook. We finished the funeral today, so let's go visit the grave tomorrow as a family of four. Is that okay? I know you were close to your mother-in-law too. And I know you're not the kind of person who would do such a sneaky thing, he said to me. When my husband said that to me, I felt relieved and burst into tears. The next day, we bought flowers that my mother-in-law liked and went to the grave with our family of four. The children were a little scared of the cemetery, which they saw for the first time. I'm sorry you couldn't attend the funeral, mother-in-law. I said that and then prayed in front of the grave for a long time. After finishing the visit to the grave and returning home, I felt a little calm. Now, I am sad and lonely because my mother-in-law is no longer in this world, and tears come to my eyes when I see anything. By the way, there was one thing that had been bothering me for a long time, so I decided to tell my husband about it. Hey, Michael, I have a favor to ask. I told my husband what I had been thinking about in front of my mother-in-law's grave. Can't we get that notebook? I just can't believe that my mother-in-law really wrote such a notebook. I want to investigate it a little. My husband seemed to have been bothered by it too. He nodded at my suggestion and said. I understand. I think dad probably has it stored somewhere, so I'll go borrow it tomorrow. Thank you. Actually, there's something else I want you to bring. My husband readily agreed to this request too. That weekend, my husband and I visited our parents' house. My brother-in-law and his wife were also invited by my father-in-law. Since there was no one who could take care of them, we brought our two children with us, but... Where's grandma? I saw them looking for their grandmother and tears came to my eyes again. Since it was a story that I didn't want to tell my children too much about, I took them upstairs and said. Wait here for a while. Don't eat too many sweets. I told my eldest daughter that and left picture books, toys, and sweets in the room. She has become more like an older sister lately and is taking good care of her younger brother, so she should be okay. I looked around at all the family members who had gathered together and took out the notebook written by my mother-in-law from my bag before saying anything. Thank you all for coming together. However, we found out that some parts of this notebook written by my mother-in-law have been forged. My brother-in-law was clearly surprised by this. What do you mean? My sister-in-law was looking down and her expression couldn't be seen. She imitated my mother-in-law's handwriting well, but this part of the name was added later. In addition, there were several parts where pages were cut out, so we had handwriting analysis done. My sister-in-law found this notebook when she returned home from work and found it lying next to my mother-in-law who had collapsed. If I had been at my parents' house, my mother might have survived if I had dealt with her immediately. I feel like I'm being crushed by regret. My sister-in-law forged this notebook, right? When I told her that, my sister-in-law began to tremble with her head down. Even though her mother had collapsed, she took the notebook away and forged it as harassment against me. You should have called an ambulance first. She chose the notebook instead of dealing with her mother's collapse, so now I hate her even more. What do you mean? What's going on? Sarah? Did you really do something like that? 
When my brother-in-law questioned her, she seemed to give up. My sister-in-law who was trembling raised her face and said with a defiant attitude. In the first place, maybe I've never seen such an attitude from her before. She had become a different person from usual. That's right. It was me who did it. You always came into our house while I was working and brought your children along as if you were showing off. You and your mother laughed at me because I couldn't have children? It's not me who's bad. It's you and your mother who made fun of me. I was terribly surprised by those words. There is no way such a fact exists. Without thinking, I denied it loudly. That is absolutely not true. Even if she couldn't have children, my mother-in-law said she would be happy if you and your husband could live happily together. That's right. Besides, isn't it your brother who is responsible for not being able to have children? My husband also chimed in. That's what I heard too. It's a lie. She wanted to look good because she didn't want people to know that she was responsible, so she decided on her own that this person did it. And yet this man has an affair with another woman. And she's an older woman with children than me. Although it was probably my brother-in-law's thoughtfulness, it seems that my sister-in-law did not think so. I think it's strange to interpret my brother-in-law's kindness as wanting to look good. And yet, I can't believe that my brother-in-law was cheating. What are you talking about? That's a misunderstanding. That person just protected because she had nowhere to go after being treated badly by her husband. My brother-in-law, who was suddenly exposed, panicked and made excuses. You wouldn't go to the woman you protected so many times and stay overnight by lying that it was a business trip. I thought that child was yours too, but it seems that wasn't the case. I checked properly. Everyone made fun of me. Saying that, my sister-in-law burst into tears. She then began to mutter to herself. Your mother writes such a diary, and she thought it would be good if Helen had an accident. I had my younger brother stir things up, but it didn't work out. I thought I would definitely succeed next time, but your mother suggested installing a drive recorder. I was so angry that I took cigarette butts from my younger brother and scattered them in front of the door. Everyone present turned pale. We had heard that my sister-in-law had a younger brother who wasn't very good, but was the road rage incident her plan? It was shocking to know that she was hated so much. What are you doing? If you had caused an accident by driving recklessly, it would have been a big problem. If you instruct someone to do it, it's a crime. Although the father-in-law raised his voice, it seemed that his words did not reach his daughter-in-law's ears. It wasn't just the father-in-law who showed his anger. I didn't realize that my sister-in-law hated my mother-in-law and me so much. Maybe I had some faults too. But what my sister-in-law did is unforgivable. At that time, the children were also in the car. I remembered the fear I felt when I was being tailgate and ended up blaming my sister-in-law strongly in the tense atmosphere. Suddenly, my brother-in-law knelt down and said, I'm sorry. What Sarah did is unforgivable, but I'm also partly responsible. I'll break up with that woman. Sarah, can you forgive me? I thought something was wrong with that. Brother-in-law. This is not just your problem as a couple. What your sister-in-law did is unforgivable, and the petty harassment of my mother-in-law in her notebook was done by your sister-in-law, right? Like this, foreign matter mixed in. Hair and vinyl pieces. I was relieved to know that they understood that what was written in my mother-in-law's notebook was not done by me. My mother-in-law had written down her feelings without mentioning any names. She probably didn't intend to show it to anyone, but it was made public when she suddenly collapsed. My father-in-law had a solemn expression on his face. That's right. I couldn't tell either and made my wife suffer. I thought we were getting along well, but I never thought Sarah had such malice. My father-in-law cut off his words for a moment. I can't live with Sarah anymore. If you don't intend to break up, both of you leave here. He said to my brother-in-law and his wife. What? That's ridiculous. My brother-in-law's pathetic voice echoed in the room. Oh mother-in-law, if only you had told us. She must have had unpleasant and scary experiences. 
Looking back now, I think my mother-in-law came to visit us more often than I went to my in-law's house for a while. And if we hadn't followed my mother-in-law's advice to install a drive recorder, it would have been really scary to think about what would have happened. I realized that my mother-in-law had protected me and my children without saying anything and burst into tears again. Oh dear, humans are scary. You can buy someone's grudge without knowing it. What will happen to your brother-in-law and his wife now that they've been kicked out? A week has passed since then, and I finally calmed down a bit and said to my husband. Well. Brother has always been a little different, he likes unhappy women. I was surprised when I heard that from my husband. Does he think he has to follow him? Maybe he wants to be someone's hero. I think he decided to marry his sister-in-law because she looked so unhappy. Is this what they call a fetish? Certainly, my sister-in-law didn't look like she was full of vitality with her slender figure, small stature, and fair skin. I remembered his saying, a ghost of a beautiful western painting, before. It's hard to believe, but apparently there are men like that. I wonder if they'll do well after all. After all, thinking that everyone else is at fault is a terribly unhappy way of thinking. You two are suited as tragic heroines and heroes who want to protect. I could tell from the way he spoke that he was still angry. Of course. If we had made one mistake, our lives would have been in danger. However, within three months, it turned out that my husband's prediction was wrong. My brother-in-law, who was fed up with his sister-in-law's jealousy, ran away. Although it seemed that he really broke up with his mistress, his sister-in-law did not believe him and continued to pursue him relentlessly, even quitting her job and stalking him like a stalker. My brother said he'd pay compensation or anything if she'd break up with him. But she didn't respond and now they're in mediation for divorce. My husband sighed as if he were disgusted while telling me this. My brother decided to divorce his sister-in-law and return to his parents' home after pleading with his father. Certainly, it would be difficult for your sister to approach that house. She wasn't an unhappy woman but rather an extremely jealous woman. When I heard that the divorce was finally settled, my husband and I were both relieved. She quit her job and apparently started working at night after returning to her parents' home, but she couldn't stay there for long due to ongoing troubles with her colleagues and kept changing jobs. I hope that she won't be deceived by men who are fooled by her fragile and quiet appearance. After all, my brother-in-law is still afraid of her. One night, my husband came home and said excitedly, hey. We're invited to Disneyland with our family of four. It seems that he won a prize in a canned coffee giveaway that he casually applied for some time ago. Isn't that amazing? We haven't been to Disneyland in a long time. I was simply overjoyed. Then my husband said proudly. <laughs> You're so naive. It's not in Japan. We're invited to the real Disneyland for five nights and six days with our family of four. Are you kidding? Really? After that, my husband, daughter, and I held hands and spun around happily. My son clapped his hands happily without knowing what was going on. Maybe my mother-in-law gave us this trip as a gift. I had no evidence to support this idea, but I wanted to believe it. Then my husband said, Maybe. If so, the plane won't crash for sure. He pretended to be joking and said it with a little anxiety, so I laughed. Actually, my husband was a little afraid of planes.